Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks. We're doing statistics! Now, statistics is a broad topic. It involves lots of different things within maths, but it also has a lot of jargon in it. So what I want to do in this video is try and break down all the different terms. When they talk about primary data, secondary dis data, discrete and continuous, what do all these things mean? So we'll talk about the different things, I'll define the different types of data so that you understand it, so that when you deal with it in the other areas of statistics, you'll know what they're talking about. Statistics as a whole, though, broadly speaking, breaks down into four different steps. Any part of statistics you're doing in maths will usually be one of these four steps. So step one, then, is you ask a question. So maybe you ask, how tall are people? Step two, you collect some data. Now, what do I mean by data? Well, let's say you go around the world to lots of different countries and you ask loads of people, how tall are they? And you write down all the results. All the answers they gave you, all those results that you collected, are known as data. The data are simply the answers to any questions you asked. You don't need to ask people necessarily. You might have asked, how much does it rain in this place or that place? And you can collect all the results by going to those places and measuring how much the rain is. So those would be your data in that case, the results, the answers to the question that you're asking. Step three, then, you display your results. Now, in statistics, we like pictures. A picture speaks a thousand words, as they say, and so we use bar charts and pie charts and line graphs and lots of different kinds of pictures, essentially. Usually, it's much easier to understand a picture than it is a long list of numbers in a table. So, if you've got a bar chart, for example, if you're comparing the heights of two bars, it's very easy to see immediately from the picture which bar is the tallest. From a list of numbers, working out which is the highest, it's not so easy. Finally then, step four, you draw some conclusions. Let's say you asked about how tall people are around the world, and you might discover that people in Sweden are taller than people in Brazil. I don't know if they are, but I haven't collected the data. If you went out and did it yourself, you might discover that one country on average is taller than another, another country. And so those are the kind of conclusions you would draw. And that's really the purpose of it. The conclusion answers the original question. If you want to know how tall people are, the conclusion should respond to that question in some way. So that's the overview, that's what statistics is, but as I said we're going to talk about the different kinds of data in particular because that's where a lot of the jargon tends to lie. Now there are different ways you can split up data. First of all, uh, it's split up on in terms of how you collect your data. So you can have primary data or secondary data. Primary data is where you've gone out and found the data yourself. So if you went to Sweden and to Brazil and you asked people how tall they are and you wrote down the results, then that will be primary data because you collected it yourself. Secondary data, on the other hand, is data you've got from another source. So if you just went online and looked at the government pages for Sweden and Brazil and got statistics about how tall people are in those countries, then that would be secondary data. Primary and secondary data each have their advantages and disadvantages. Generally, primary data is more reliable. If you've gone out and collected results, then you know they're true because you collected them. Whereas secondary data, on the other hand, you don't really know if the person whose data you've got is actually telling the truth. Maybe they lied about some of the numbers. Maybe they made some of the numbers up. You just don't know. Obviously, if they're a reliable, trustworthy source, then you can go with that and you think, that's okay, I'll use this data, I think it's probably true. But you just need to be slightly careful with secondary data that you trust the source. Obviously though, primary data is much more time consuming to collect and expensive if you have to travel around the world asking all these people yourself, whereas secondary data, you can just go online, use your computer and find out the information very quickly. So secondary data tends to get used far more often in practice because it's so quick and easy to do. But as I say, you've just got to be very careful about the source. Do you trust the place you're getting the data from? So that's the first way you can split up the data, primary or secondary. Another way that you can split up data, though, is in terms of the kind of results you're getting. So, uh, and the way we split it up in that case is it's either qualitative or quantitative. Now, those are big words. They sound complicated, but they're really not. Quantitative data is basically anything that's a quantity or a number. So if you ask somebody how tall they are and they say 180 centimetres, then 
you write that down, that answer is a number, it's a quantity, so that's quantitative data. If it's not a number, it's qualitative. So if you ask somebody what colour their hair is, they might say black, then that's not a number, it's a colour. It's a quality of that person. So that will be qualitative data. So quantitative data, if it's a number, qualitative data, if it's not a number. Now, if it's quantitative, if it's a number, then you can further break that down into two different types. You've either got discrete data or continuous data. And I'm going to give you a few examples of each of these so you can understand these terms, because these in many ways are the most important terms you need to be aware of in terms of the different types of data. So let me get my pen. Discrete data we'll cover first is where things come in fixed values and the values in between don't make any sense. Let me give you an example. In the UK we measure shoe sizes on a scale where you might be a size 4 or you can be a 4.5, they have halves, or a size 5 maybe, or a 5.5, size 6, etc. But you're not allowed any of the values in between. You can't be a size 5 and a quarter. It just doesn't exist. Obviously people's feet might be different sizes between those, but when you buy shoes, shoe sizes come in these fixed values. If, you're, if you find a size 5 is too small for you and a size 5.5 is too big, well, tough. You can't buy a shoe size that sits in between these two. So this is what you call discrete data. It comes in fixed values and the values in between are not allowed. Although there are numbers between 5 and 5.5, five and in terms of this particular scale, there aren't any values on the scale. They don't exist. There are no shoes that come in a size five and a quarter or 5.1 or something. Another example would be, say, if you're talking about the number of people in a classroom. There might be 20 people in a classroom. There might be 22 people in the classroom. But you couldn't have 21.5 people. That wouldn't make any sense. You can't get half people. They don't exist. So that would be another example of discrete data. And in general, anything that's a number of something would be discrete. So the number of computers, the number of chairs, the number of cars, those things are all discrete. You might have five cars, you might have six cars, you can't have 5.3 cars. It just doesn't make any sense, it doesn't exist. So if that's what you've got, that's discrete data. Continuous data, on the other hand, is where you've got a smooth scale. And all the values along the scale are allowed. They all make sense. So if you were measuring, uh, if you were measuring the length of something, Let's say this is a, a zoomed-in ruler. So if these are centimetres, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. You might measure something to be 2 centimetres or 3 centimetres long. But equally, you might measure it to be 2.4 centimetres long. And that's fine. 2.4 centimetres exists. It makes sense. And in fact, you could pick any value along the scale and it would be allowed. It would make sense. You could understand it. So that's what makes this continuous. And anything that you can measure on a scale like this, where all the values in between are allowed, they all make sense, is continuous. So length is one example, weight, volume, temperature, all of these things are continuous. So those are two different types. Discrete, if it's fixed values and you're not allowed the ones in the middle. Continuous, if it's a smooth scale and all the values are fine. So hopefully that's given you a good overview of the different kinds of data and some of the words we use. Essentially, data is primary or secondary, depending on where you got it from, and then it's qualitative or quantitative. So if it, quality, if it's not a number, if it's a colour or something like that. Quantity, if it is a number, it's quantitative data, and then it could be either discrete or continuous. That's how it breaks down. My name's Jonathan Hicks, and you're watching Teach Me Maths. <laughs>First of all, you can split data into two types depending on how you collected it. You've got primary data, that's the phone. 